Oh, hi everybody. Now in this video, we're going to go over the different boat positions. Horizontal, flat, vertical, and so on. I'll be using this for the fill belt, and then I'll just be using a piece of flat plate to simulate a groove belt or any flat belt. Now you may notice that I have a different machine here too. This one is the Yes Welder YWA160. It is a little inverter. It will run on 110 or 220. It can run stick or lift TIG and it has settings for arc force and VRD. VRD is voltage reduction device. And you can also on this machine select different broad diameters and it'll give you a range of amperages to use for that specific rod diameter so you don't have to do a bunch of research as to what heat range you can run. It's already preset in the machine. So now that we've gone over all that, we're going to get started and I will explain all these different positions so that you can practice at home. But for this we'll go over the plate. I will go over positions for pipe in another video. But to start off, 1G for both fillet welds and groove welds is flat. Groove weld, and I'll just use this piece of flat plate. A groove weld is going to sit flat whether it's in your vise or on your bench. And this is a very basic weld that we practice, one of the first welds that anybody practices. One's flat, 15, 20 degree trailing dragging angle and just run straight across. Might do a little bit of a weave to keep yourself steady, but that's the basic motion of it. For a fillet weld, flat is like this. The weld is literally flat, creating this V. Your rod is going to be straight up and down like this. Again, probably a 15 degree dragging angle. And then you're gonna fill in this, you're gonna fill in this cavity here. Now I like to do a little bit of a sweeping motion just to wash up a little bit. But the nice thing about this is you can turn your heat up and just let the metal fill right in. G is horizontal. So for a groove weld, Horizontal is literally looking at it like this. Now for this, I will drop my rod angle down, probably close to 40 degrees. I'd be straight on. I wouldn't be pushing or pulling. It would be more pretty straight, and I do U shapes, kind of the, and it's more of a whipping U shape where you're kind of just like. You're telling the puddle to get back up to where it was as it's falling. You're kind of playing catch with yourself. For a fillet weld, 2F horizontal is like this. Just like you would practice a regular fillet weld on your, on your bench. Put it down the bench like this. Half of your 90 to 45, dragging, and then I do, again, I do use or a weaving motion of some sort, but just to keep myself even. Nice and steady. And very basic. 3G is vertical. Groove weld, or flat weld, butt weld, whatever you want to call it. Vertical up. Right angle, again, I'm dropping it way down. And I am going back and forth. Now that back and forth motion allows me to climb up on itself. So rods such as 6013 or 7018 tend to like to build up on themselves if you have your amperage set right. Well, you'll slide to the edge of the puddle in the corner, and you go to the opposite corner to the edge, 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 and so on. 2F for a fill weld is very much the same thing. 
The only difference is instead of welding on a flat piece of plate, you're welding on a 90 degree anchor. This is a little bit more difficult because you have more of a chance of undercut. So, what you would be doing in this case, what I would do in this case, is the same thing, drop your rod angle way down and doing the same climbing motion that I was talking about for the groove weld, but instead of just whipping back and forth and back and forth, you're pausing on your edges a little longer to get your metal to fill up so you're not getting so much undercut. Because the undercut is caused by your arc cutting the metal out, but not replacing what you cut out. So if you pause a little bit and allow it to fill up, you don't have any undercut. If you're afraid to do that, or if you create more undercut, then either your amperage is too hot or your rod is too big. But it's again a climbing motion, and that's how you get that little weave pattern. And now everybody's favorite, forging, which is overhead. So for a flat plate, groove well, butt well, just like that. Now this is not as difficult as people think it is. What happens is your mind kind of plays tricks on you. So when you're watching this, the only thing to remember is that gravity's coming towards you, not, not into the plate, away from the plate. So with my rod, if I'm floating towards me like this, my rod's going to be in a pushing angle, a very small pushing angle, maybe 10 degrees at the most, then I'm act I am weaving back and forth. No pausing, no crazy whips or motions or anything like that, just a little weave back and forth to keep myself steady. Now my amperage is actually up from what I would normally run. I want that arc force to keep that puddle up there. For Phillip welds, a 4F is like that. So it's going to be overhead like this. My angle is going to be, instead of being 45 degrees like it would be on a a horizontal weld, I would probably drop it closer to 60 degrees like that. And then this would also be used and I would be whipping it up in place and pausing at the top in order to fill in to avoid any undercut. Again, if you're getting undercut after you're pausing like that or your undercut gets worse when you pause to let it fill in, your amperage is probably too hot or your rod is too big. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this helps you for practicing at home. This is very simple stuff that you can do, again, with just some eighth inch flat bars, simple stuff you can get at Home Depot, Lowe's, or any hardware store, and this little YWA 160. That fun fact, every weld that I did was on a 110 standard wall outlet. Please show me you enjoy this content by liking this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you always later.